Hello and welcome to Ardex Facebook Live. My name is Dave Rowley and I'm the Training and Technical Manager for Ardex. And today we're going to be talking about tiling in warmer conditions and uh, warmer areas. Before we actually get started though, um, all I'd like to do is just to uh, uh, go forward with regards to while you're actually on here live over the next 20 to 30 minutes, if you actually say hi in the comments below the box uh, and also ask a question, you will actually receive an Ardex team uh, t-shirt. But what I'd like to do now is actually start off the, the process about tanning in warm conditions. We all now experiencing this hot uh, weather and also we've also experienced some time back with regards to tanning in cold conditions. Likewise, in hot conditions, this can have a knock-on effect in a number of different cases. And some of the things I want to talk about over the next 20 minutes or so is really about how you store your products, the substrate considerations you need to take in consideration as well, as well as also the mixing and also your time scales. So starting things off, as far as tanning in hot conditions, what is this actually affecting you? With regards to tanning in hot temperatures, you need to be looking at anything over 20 degrees C, which is what the optical uh, times are within all the products. So when we talk about pot line, this is actually based at 20 degrees C. When you start increasing that temperature higher to the likes of 25, this can actually now start to have a knock-on effect on performance, meaning the product itself won't actually achieve its full strength. Uh, as it gets hotter and hotter, it can also reduce your pot life and also open time. So it has a knock on effect on your working conditions. Ultimately, what happens is the product itself, and this can apply to not just, we talk about Ardex products today, but this applies to all products out there. Cementitious products themselves, because they, they're chemical cure, what happens there is it actually heats up as it starts to set and it gets that hydration. If the temperatures rose too quickly, the actual it will tend to flash set, but the actual adhesion of the product will not actually achieve its full performance. Therefore, you can have issues with regards to tiles debonding, you can also get shrinkage, cracking, and you'll see this obviously more so when using products like leather compounds, uh, but anything that's actually ultimately the product could fail. So, what you need to start considering is planning and changes some of the concepts you normally do uh, during the rest of the time of the year. So, starting off with things like storage. You've automatically now, you've purchased the products for a project. Now, depending on the size of the project, you, some of the products may be stored outside, uh, if on larger sorts of projects. So it's again, it's where that's stored and make sure it's covered and make sure it's not in direct light and sunlight. Also, with regards to storing the products that you will maybe take to site that morning, you may have actually purchased that product the day before. And as we all know, when you've actually left your car or your van, just for an hour or so, the temperature in that vehicle starts to increase in temperature and it's like an oven. And that will also have the same effect on the product itself. So it's about planning. Potentially what you'd be best doing is actually taking that product and store it indoors away from direct sunlight and where it's obviously a lot cooler in the, uh, where you're going to be working so that you actually gain optimum uh, temperatures when you come to start using that product at the following day. Also what you've got to consider is it's, it's not just you actually purchasing product, it's also distributors, everybody's actually storing products, making sure that the temperature is actually as cool as possible. We all talk about temperatures above 5 degrees from the frost aspect, but ultimately you want to make sure that you try to keep it around about 20 degrees C. As I say, maximum temperature for tiling itself should be no more than 30. So keep that also in mind. And this is where planning uh, comes in with regards to, you may consider, if you've got to get the job done, maybe consider coming early in the morning, or start maybe considering looking at tiling more or so in the evening, and, and not actually during the the, the, obviously the hottest part of the day, which is the afternoon. Also, you've got to consider things like substrates. Now, we're talking about air temperature being optimal at 20 degrees, 
obviously over 25 we start seeing some changes with performance and, and products but the, the actual substrate that you're going on to is generally a lot higher in temperature than the air uh, temperature so that can actually be raised by it could be in some cases 10 degrees it depends upon where you are doing the time, direct sunlight, conservatories are obviously a big one to be mindful of, but also if it's darker substrates, it will obviously uh, retain the heat for a lot uh, longer than obviously something that's lighter, and screens are generally a lot darker uh, as, a, as a in colour. So when you're looking at substrates itself, and we're not talking about uh, hot temperatures when we're talking outside, this can apply internally as well. So, when you're looking at substrates that are quite porous, you may need to consider the use of priming. We talk about priming on, on a day-to-day on -day basis anyway, but also if you don't normally need to prime that surface, you might want to actually consider priming, but follow the RDX technical day sheets on all the primers that we have within the range, as to the dilution rate or the type product according to the substrate you're going onto. But with regards to priming itself, for internal use, you could use products like P51. Uh, this itself is obviously an acrylic primer. For internal use, it can be used for external as well, but only use it externally if you're going to be using a compound, uh, an external self smooth compound such as K301, and that normally would be diluted to 1 to 7 ratio. For most general internal applications, depending on substrate, Typically it's one to three, so three parts clean water and corals of course, uh, to one part of the P51, but ultimately it depends on the substrate as to the dilution rate uh, that you get applied. And what I've done here is I've already pre-diluted the P P51, which is the colour primer, so this actually ensures that you can see the actual, excuse the application of where you're applying it. Normally you would use a brush, or you could use a, a soft bristle brush, and this itself, all you're doing is just putting an even amount onto the surface and what you want to do is just ensure that the primer can actually absorb the actual background itself. Leave this to dry now, obviously in hotter temperatures this will dry a lot quicker than obviously in, in, in normal sort of 20 degrees or, or obviously as it gets colder. Always ensure that any primer that you use that you don't pool it, so you don't want to put too much on, but just enough, just so it physically absorbs the actual background itself. And what that is actually doing is that is actually what's that doing itself? It's actually giving you maximised open time with the products. So therefore, you can apply your adhesive to the background, and therefore giving you the opportunity to fix the tiles without it skinning over, losing the open time, and not actually getting that adhesion to the, uh, to the tile. So, the question from me actually is not from, not, not from anybody watching, but uh, still do get your questions in. We, we talked about leaving bags out in the sun in the, in the in back of vans, presumably. Is that the same for things like primers and SVR and things like that? It applies to all products. Obviously, the likes of cement-based materials, um, that could be leather compounds, tile adhesives, grouts, but also it could be affected by things like DPMs, and this could be uh, also epoxy primers, it could also be epoxy grouts, um, really anything that actually uh, that has dries chemically will have an adverse effect when it comes to hot temperatures. So any storing of, of any products you've got to make sure that you try to minimise it by putting a, a cool uh, area or certainly not in direct sunlight. So, with regards to the prime itself, just be mindful that if you prime something, you will maximise on your open time, but also what you've got to consider is the types of adhesives that you're going to be using. As you're aware, within the RDX range, we have a, a range of different products, and the range of products there to, are there to meet your needs, and that could be down to dry times for grouting, it can also be down to the substrate you're going on to, but also the types of materials that you're going to be installing, such as like natural materials and stone. But obviously in this sort of weather conditions, we're all starting to uh, look at products that give you a longer pot life and longer open times to actually uh, give you maximised time to be able to use the product 
but also there will be cases where rapid setting of these things will still be needed, even during these summer and hot uh, temperatures. So what you've got to consider when choosing the DC is look at the officer technical day sheets within the RX range as to if that product is suitable for the environment. If it's not, because it's standard setting, it doesn't mean because it's hot temperatures that you must use that product. But optimally with a lot of products, a lot of backgrounds, lots of situations, standard setting DC will be suitable for, for those applications. And within the RDX range, we have a series of different standard setting products, such as uh, X7, G or X7W, which is your grey and white. These are standard setting adhesives, which actually have maximum pot lives of five hours. So it means you're being able to mix the full bag, even obviously during the 20, 25 degree sort of temperatures, and you will still get a good sort of pot life, not necessarily five hours, but at least you still have an optimum chance of actually using the full bag in that time scale. Also within the RDX range, we have the X77. X77 is actually the Microtech uh, tile adhesive. One of the beauties about the Microtech aspect is the fact that it, the product performance and over time is a lot better in the sense that within the product, the pot life is three hours, so it's slightly less than the X7G uh, or the X7W but you actually get an open time of 60 minutes. So that means the fact that you can spread reasonable sort of amount of area and still be able to fix the tiles without it actually skinning over. Also, what's unique about the X77 is we've also got that in 10 kilo bags as well as in 20. So also you've got to consider sort of how much you're mixing. Are you working on your own? Are you working as a team? Make sure that you can, wherever you mix up, obviously meets the requirement to actually be used in. But the 10 kilo uh, bags come in a bucket with 4.25 litres of, of mark on the actual bucket itself, so you can fill that with water and get the actual rack uh, application consistency, and you're only mixing half the amount. So even though it's three hour pot life, temperature will play a big part, so you might lose, you could lose an hour. But that's still, uh, if you've got sort of very small complex sort of tiling, then the 10 kilo bag may be something you may be considering. But also it comes in 20 kilo bags, it's down to personal preference and obviously how much you want to mix up and given the team that you're working with at that time if that's the case. I'd also have the X78, now this is obviously the one that we recommend for external applications. So this is where you're tiling externally, this one also like X77 has got a three hour pot life and also has an open time of 60 minutes for fixing external tiling, large format porcelain, that type of thing. So these three products are the most suited ones in hotter temperatures because you maximise on your pot life and obviously with the fibre, micro, the micro tech range, you've got the increased uh, open time of well of 60 minutes. But keep in mind, if you're fixing natural stones, you will still need to move back to our natural stone range, which is uh, you've got the X27 X or the X28, or sorry, S27, S28, uh, S20, or the X32. These products have been formulated for water sensitive stones, that type of thing, but they are rapid setting. So be mindful not mixing large quantities. Well, we are on the subject of actually mixing. This is also another uh, element to consider, something we don't always think about uh, in day-to-day -day sort of time in life, but in hot temperatures, the sort of things you need to be considering, and that is, one, the water supply. I have just literally, just for this demonstration here, I actually uh, just got some water in the, the uh, Ardex Academy here, and literally I had to feed off two buckets of water to actually before it even got to, to cold. So, the, uh, the taps itself, when you are using any cold water, don't just presume, because using a cold tap, that cold water is coming out. You will have to run off uh, some of the water first before you start using that to mix up the, the actual products. Also, in the site conditions where you may not have water supply uh, very, very close by, you may be using water bottles, you may be using hoses. 
if you're using hose, you try and make sure they're not in direct sunlight while you're actually filling. Make sure you try to shade them as much as possible within reason. The water butts, if you're filling up with, with water there, you may need to consider uh, filling up uh, more frequently to, to make sure you've got constantly cold water because while it's uh, baking outside, the water temperature will raise, uh, rise in temperature as well, which all these things will have a knock on effect on the performance of the product and obviously reducing your pot life, but ultimately the issue uh, go back to what I said at the beginning, and that is potential issues of shrinkage, cracking, and potentially lifting as well. Also, uh, when you're mixing, we do this automatic, but also make, wash your paddles after each mix. When you've mixed the products themselves, it's also a good idea to not just scrape the last bit of the dish out. Take some water, wash out the bucket, and that before you start mixing again. All these factors, if you're mixing products and then you're mixing other products in the same bucket with products that you mixed previously, this can be a catalyst and actually uh, cause the dish to go off faster as well. Also, the tools that you're using, once you use the tools, wash them down as, as soon as you possibly can. Again, don't just go from one mix to the next because you're actually mixing older products with the fresher products, and this can also have a knock on effect on reducing your uh, working time, pot life, and product performance ultimately. So, what I've got here, I've actually mixed up some of the X77, which I did actually just over an hour ago now. And this itself, this has actually got a three hour pot life, and this comes in available in both grey and white. The material itself, just literally apply onto your background in a normal sort of way, but with this itself, you can obviously apply a larger sort of area. But be mindful, because it says 60 minutes on the back, uh, packaging, on the technical day sheet, you may find, well, as you move into the 25 degrees or even uh, over that, that uh, the open time will be reduced, as well as obviously the pot line. And literally, you can apply this to yourself onto your area. And the beauty about this is, it allows you to be able to apply the DC and feature tiles in the same way you would normally do in normal sort of temperature conditions. As you can see, the material itself easy to actually adjust the tiles into position and obviously fix in a normal sort of way. But again, if you're going to be using all the cement bases like rapid setting, all I would say is reduce the amount of spread as well as also maybe what you mix up as well. And again, when you're finished, just literally wash the tools off. As I've done earlier, I'll wash the paddle. Wash the tools off once you're finished. Before you obviously use the next product mix. Try to reduce the amount of contaminants, contamination that you're going to get between each of the mixes. Dave, what about leaving tools out in the sun? Any problems about that? You know. Well, as far as it depends, obviously, if working indoors, outdoors. Obviously, outdoors, anything you do to minimise the, the, the how hot it gets. Uh, so, keeping the tools obviously in the shade. As far as if you're using hoses, if you're using black holes, the hoses in particular, it's not a particularly good one because that just keeps the heat in the in the actual hose. Um, Obviously, I mentioned about the water sort of aspect. Anything you can do just to minimise is actually the best thing you possibly can. If you're doing, if you're turning, if you're indoors, obviously it will still be uh, hotter there. It can be, but obviously where you've got direct light, like conservatories or where obviously sun shining through the windows, just be mindful as far as what you, if you can make sure products and mixing stations are out of the way. So the fact is, try to keep it as cool as you possibly can under the circumstances. So, with regards to the mixing, just be mindful about water. Be mindful about making sure that you don't just run off. Make sure that water is cold, uh, not lukewarm. Try to keep it as cold as you possibly can. Also, consider as far as obviously where you're storing and your mixing station where you're going to be doing it. The choice of adhesives. 
are obviously going to be based upon the, the project itself. Uh, you may not get away from rapid setting points in some cases, but as I said before, between the range of X7, uh, X77 and X78, you've got the ability that for certainly over these next few months, you've got the ability you can actually at least tile and get more optimum open time um, pot life. But obviously in cases where you're fixing natural materials or certain types of substrates, then you may have to choose a, uh, an alternative or an exclusive. So we talked about application and it's common sense really. Just be if you work if you work on the own, don't spread too much if you if you know it's going to go off too quick, quite quickly. Um, and uh, again, if you are working in teams, then just uh, maximise and just work together uh, to actually physically get the tiling done in the in the obviously the right um, time. And then what you've also got to consider is things like when you, the tiling is completed, is where can we actually try to cover it off? So you may need to consider uh, trying to shield it where you possibly can. So direct sunlight on things like this eve, leather compounds is obviously a key one because you will see if there's any issues the following day when you come back to site where you get shrinking line and, and, uh, and so on. So try to actually shield off, ship it in shade uh, as much as you possibly can. Um, close your doors if, if you're actually in the kitchen from a conservatory. Anything you can do just to keep uh, uh, the sun away from the actual area that you've been tiling itself until it's actually fully hardened um, and took before you restart the grounding process. With regards to uh, if you go, these are obviously applicable to adhesives we've been talking about, but equally when you're using other products such as epoxies. Uh, DPMs, epoxy grouts. Once these products are mixed up, for those who mix epoxies, you know they heat up in the container quite quickly, or can do certainly with epoxy primers, DPMs, but also with epoxy grouts as well. So when you mix up any products like this, you've got here the EG18 Plus, you've got the obviously set amounts there once you've mixed up. Where possible, try to take it out of the container as quickly as possible. Because any material, if it's actually in the container itself, because of the mass, it will actually heat up. So where possible, if you're using things like epoxy primers, pour the container uh, in onto the floor itself, in strips, get it out of the container itself, so you minimal amount of material there, and therefore you're not actually causing an issue with regards to it going off too quickly. With regards to epoxies, where you can obviously try to work in teams if you can. The good thing about EG18 Plus is it's got 60 minutes at, at its optimum temperature, 20 degrees. That will obviously reduce uh, as you move to 25 and beyond. So you might be looking at 30 minutes. So as long as you make sure that whatever you mix up will be used in that time. So it may even be considered that you may have to split the unit down by half if you're on your road and you're obviously grouting up quite a lot of uh, big tiles, you're only using minimum amount of epoxy at that one time, it might be a good idea to split the, the pack so that you, you don't waste any of the product itself. And that obviously also applies, again, with, as I said before, epoxy primers and so on as well. So, any questions from anybody? No? Okay. So, I hope that's actually been useful for you all. But just keep in mind, just think about what you're doing when you're starting this project. And if possible, if you can work it on, uh, in different sort of times, like early in the morning and maybe uh, later in the evening, these are options you've also got, as well as the products and what you can do to minimize the risk of uh, creating heat into the product. Mis mixing products up, don't have it at the fast speed. Make sure you keep it quiet at a slow speed. Wash your tools uh, after each of the mixes. All these are mixing and washing your buckets out. All these will be factors will help you to actually ensure that you get the maximum open times pot life and the product actually then won't have any issues with regards to shrinkage and cracking. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.